Good morning. This morning you get me totally in my natural state, no makeup, just did a little light workout, just hanging out at my house, but I was reviewing some labs this morning and I actually, it brought me back to my labs because I have a case who's really similar to mine. Um, so I was going back and forth and just seeing what other things we need to tweak and do and how to make changes to get this lady well. And as I was going through my labs, um, it really kind of hit me really emotionally. So what I want to do is share with you guys one of my hormone tests from a few years back when I was at my sickest, explain how that happened to me, how I fixed it, thankfully. Um, and just to give you some insight, I talked about hormones the other day, is just if you know your hormones, especially for women, you can get a lot of key answers to what's going on with your health. So I want to share with you guys about mine and hopefully this hits home with some of you guys. So let me get this flip around. Okay, so this was my test a few years ago. So I was 32 when I took my first, um, actually this was my second one, um, but I was 32 years old. And the first thing I want you to see right here on these levels, the way we're supposed to read these is if you're a cycling healthy female, you should be between those two yellow stars, that cycling range. The purple little bar at the bottom is menopausal range. So at 32 years old, I was already in menopausal range for progesterone. I was nearing menopausal range for estrogen and my testosterone was pretty high. So at this point we had um, probably been trying to get pregnant for about a year. And obviously with progesterone and estrogen and menopausal range, that was not going to happen. Um, and as I sit here right now sharing this with you, I'm 40 weeks pregnant waiting for this baby. So obviously this got better <laughs> or that wouldn't have been possible. Um, but when I saw this, it broke my heart because I was like, holy crap, I'm sick. I'd already been working with women. I'd seen other people's hormones. And I really, when I took this test, I didn't expect them to be this bad. And when they came back, I had a good, like <laughs> probably 10 minutes of shock and awe. And I was devastated. I was crying. I was like, we're never having another baby. Like, how did this happen? What do I do? How do I fix this? So I really dove in deep and I'm going to show you. So these first ranges are things that if you just did a basic blood draw, you would be able to see your estrogen, your progesterone, your testosterone. That's great. But that only gives you one teeny tiny piece of the puzzle. I knew what my levels were, but I had no idea why they were so bad. So that's what I love about this Dutch test um, is it gives you a lot more of the why. We figure out how to fix this thing. So my hormones were terrible, but now let me show you the why. My adrenals were also pretty bad, but we'll talk about that in just a second. So then we get to this page which is one of my favorite pages on the Dutch test because it tells you um, how your body converts hormones. Where do they go? What happens after they've been made? So what a lot of people don't realize is all of your hormones are so delicately connected that one actually makes the other ones. So when you go in somewhere and they wanna just give you progesterone or estradiol or DHEA, that's not how your body works. Every hormone makes another one. So the order that you're seeing these is actually the order that your body makes and converts hormones. So every hormone in your whole body starts with cholesterol. It's not on here, but that would be right up here above pregnenolone. So cholesterol would start at the top, and then it converts to pregnenolone. Pregnenolone physically converts down and makes DHEA and progesterone. DHEA converts into testosterone. Testosterone can either make more testosterone or it converts down into estrogen, and it needs to do both. And then your estrogens need to be safely detoxed out of your body so they're not stored in your lymphatic tissue, your breast tissue, so they can't create things like endometriosis or cancer. And I did say estrogens because we have multiple of them. You've probably only ever been tested, if you have even been tested, for this one called estradiol, which is, again, one teeny tiny piece of your puzzle when we actually need to see multiple, multiple estrogens in your body to know what's really going on. So I had two very distinct things happening um, that really make a lot of sense now that I know this. And the first one was, if you look at my estrogens, so I'm menopausal pretty much up here, but as you look down, we have this one right here, and it's all the way in the red. Now that one, if you follow down here, it says, if not detoxified, this type of estrogen can actually cause and bind and cause DNA damage. 
DNA damage is what causes things like cancer and it's abnormal cell growth and things in the uterus and the ovaries. So I want you to know, regardless of what's going on with your body, it's brilliant and it's doing something for a reason. My body knew if it made a whole bunch of estrogen right now and I'm making that much of the bad one, I'm in trouble. There is going to be cancer. There's going to be inflammation. There's going to be pain and devastation in my body. So my body did the most natural thing. It downregulated all of this. It said, hey, let's just stop giving her more estrogen so that we don't give her cancer. Brilliant, but I would have never known that. And you can't see that on a basic blood test. So what my first step of action had to be is clean up my body, clean up my detox pathways, get my body able to safely feel like it could produce some more estrogen without putting me in danger. So when I saw that, yeah, it sucks. And I was like, oh, that's awful but I knew what to do and I knew how to fix it. So that gave me a lot of peace, like, okay, let's get to work. That's what I have to start working on. So that was my answer to why my estrogens were so low. And then my progesterone over here, if you look, progesterone is actually the direct precursor, which means it's the level before cortisol, which my friends, cortisol is our stress hormone. I think most of us are pretty stinking stressed right now. Um, and my body was actually handling stress different than a lot of people's. So I see this often, um, especially in people with chronic pain, fibromyalgia, infertility. I see this um, pattern really, really often. And that's where my cortisol free levels were not too high. So if you would have just got a basic blood draw for cortisol levels, mine would have probably come back pretty normal and they would have said, no, your adrenal glands look great, which is not necessarily true. Cause again, you have one small tiny piece of the puzzle. So my cortisol wasn't terrible, but what my body was doing is taking all of my cortisol, which is my stress hormone and turning it into massive inflammation. So another protective mechanism is that your body can turn cortisol, which is a stress hormone, into cortisone, which is an inflammatory hormone um, in times of stress. So this was a very stressful time in our life. My body was stressed, my mind was stressed. So what was happening is every time something stressful happened in my life, my body was creating more inflammation. So I was getting migraine headaches almost every day. My joints were hurting, my body was aching. Every time I would get stressed out, I would feel sicker because physically, every time my body made cortisol, it would turn it into cortisone and I would physically get sicker. But these are the people that go to the doctor and they're like, oh, you're depressed or oh, you need anti-anxiety medication. No, I need to get my body to stop making this much inflammation so I don't feel terrible all the time. So if you suffer from migraines, chronic pain, headaches, those types of things, um, this is a pattern we definitely wanna look at because I see that so often in people. And mine was skyrocketed. I like this number somewhere, typically about 300 is ideal. Mine was over 500. I mean, massive amounts of inflammation going on in my body. Um, but the problem with this is progesterone is a direct precursor to cortisol, which turns to cortisone. So that means every time my body got stressed and inflamed, it was also stealing my progesterone. And progesterone is one of the main things that really make women feel happy and healthy. It's huge for fertility. It's huge for making sure you don't have early miscarriages. It's huge for brain fog. So if you're past cycling range, if you're in, um, you know, even in menopause, you still need healthy amounts of progesterone to make you feel really good and healthy. So if you're stressed and you have a bad adrenal pattern, you by nature can't be healthy because that progesterone is going to be off. So, um, there's always an answer. That's what I want you to know. So those were my basic answers. And I'll go through some other things that were playing a part in that because it's never just one thing. Um, but that's what I love about testing is I could have got some basic blood work. I could have listened to the doctor say, oh, we don't really test hormones or whatever. Um, and I'd still be sick and suffering and I'm not. So I hope that for all of you guys too. get answers, get testing. There's always a reason. The more you know about your body and what to do with it, um, the quicker you're going to get well. So I hope that touched base with somebody and that's just my part of the story. There's a ton of different patterns we see on this Dutch test. So I think I'm going to share several with you guys over the next couple of weeks and just different things that can happen that could be contributing to why you feel the way that you do. So have a great rest of your weekend.